equals 32,413 watts. 32,413 watts, which is equal to 32.4 kilowatts. If you've got a 100 volt EUC, that means you need 324.13 amps. Electric motors aren't 100% efficient. So if you've got 350 amps, you'll be able to reach the top theoretical speed based on the tires grip. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty like cool to know. 32.4 kilowatts. You know, let's work that out in horsepower. 45.8. So it's just about 46 horsepower. 46 horsepower. You got 46 horsepower, then you can reach top theoretical speed. 226 kilometers an hour. Can you imagine going that fast on an EUC? It would be like flying, it would be better than flying because if you speak to like anyone that's flying, that's flown a jet, the most exciting thing you can do is fly low to the ground. The lower you go, the more extreme it becomes. So if you're on an EUC touching the ground at these kind of speeds, it would just be mind boggling. The sensation, it'd be like nothing else. And by the way, these are the batteries we use to get us around. Or oh, these are the these are eighteen six fifty cells. But the interesting thing to note is that each one of these cells can take us about a half a kilometer. Because think about it, like on the OG Sherman, you've got two hundred and forty of these, and it's got a range of about one hundred and twenty kilometers. So each one takes you five hundred meters. It's interesting because if you made a rocket. Like, imagine a, a little rocket using rocket technology. Do you think something this small could get you that far? I don't know. I don't think so. And you've, we've packed 200 kilometers of range into this thing. You try to do that with combustion technology, you can't do it. Where are you going to put the fuel? You need a gallon of gas to go that far. See if it's still, yeah, it's still there, guys. What are you doing? How'd you get in there? How'd you get in there? Poor little bugger. What is up guys? So we're back on this topic of top speed and in the last episode on this we derived this equation here which gives you the top theoretical speed of an EUC rider. So pretty interesting stuff right? But I want to look at this again because in this analysis we actually assumed that we had a um, we had infinite grip and that's something I didn't mention so I'm assuming infinite grip. There's no limit to our grip. And assuming that, we got an answer of 306 kilometers per hour. 306.4 kilometers per hour was the max theoretical achievable speed by an EUC if it has unlimited power. So there's two assumptions. Unlimited grip, unlimited power, and zero rolling resistance. Those are the actually three assumptions. Later, I'm going to put the rolling resistance into the equation. It, it doesn't have much effect anyway, but we'll do that just, to, just for fun. We'll do that at the end. But we're going to look at the grip. That's the most important thing. So we, we've got limits to how much grip we have. Our tire eventually is going to slip. Once you apply a certain amount of torque, it won't be able to grab the road anymore. It's just going to slip. It's going to skid. So let's look at the... Um, that diagram real quick again. So let's look at the diagram of an EUC with a rider on top. So that's the wheel. 
It's the EUC. The rider just standing up right straight up in this position, in this situation. And if you're standing up right, you know that you can't go anywhere, can you? On an EUC, if you want to go forwards, you've got to lean forwards first. And then the wheel can deliver the torque that you need to move forwards. If you're standing up right like this and the wheel tries to deliver torque, let's say in that direction, so it's going to try and move forwards, what's going to happen? Any guesses? The rider is just going to fall backwards, aren't they? Because of the reaction torque. Because of this torque here that's going to be applied on the rider, they're going to tip backwards, right? There's also the linear acceleration component because the EUC is trying to accelerate forwards. There's a, another torque added on top. But we're only looking at the reaction torque here. And now let's look at a rider that is leaning forwards. So, and I, I exaggerate the angles here so it's obvious. Now the EUC can deliver torque without the rider tipping backwards. In fact, it needs to. If the EUC doesn't deliver torque, the rider's going to fall on their face. So that's how the EUC works. It can only deliver as much torque as you allow it to, essentially. And you know intuitively as a rider that the harder you lean forward, the harder you accelerate. If you only lean forward a little bit, you're just going to slowly take off, aren't you? And that is what I want you to understand. I want you to understand that the EUC delivers the torque that it needs to keep you in balance. And how much torque is that? It's the same amount of torque as you apply on it. Like a wrench, basically. Just like a wrench, because of your weight. Let's draw this as the center of mass. And you've got a weight mg that's your downforce weight due to gravity because of that weight you're wrenching on the machine it's like a wrench you know with a spanner you're cranking it forwards right and the only way it can stop itself from falling all the way forwards is by applying a reaction torque right so it applies a torque in this direction which creates a reaction torque like this Right? And it brings you back. But I want to... Alright, and now, by the way, we're going to go through this again real quick. So if you look, if you already saw this analysis from the last video. If you already saw this analysis, feel free to skip ahead. But we're going to derive this equation real quick. And just realize it's probably worth watching it again because I'm going to explain it better now. And I'm going to go further and I'm going to add in the the limits of grip because in this analysis guys when we derive this answer of 306 kilometers per hour we assumed that we had infinite grip right no limit to our grip and we also assumed infinite power that was the main assumption assuming you've got unlimited power how fast can you go on an EUC but we we're also assuming unlimited grip and based on unlimited grip we got an answer of about 306 kilometers an hour using the numbers we plugged in. So like a 75 kilogram rider and 0.8 meters for the center point here. And yeah, so like I said, feel free to skip ahead if you want. And I just want to sh show you something real quick here. On In this position, say this rider here, they've also got a downforce of mg. But that downforce, it passes straight through the fulcrum point. So you've got, no di you've got no leverage. There's no lever arm. But when you're in this position, right? Let's draw the arrows here like this. You've got a lever arm because there's a distance here called distance D. That's your lever arm. The force is offset from the fulcrum point. So now you've got torque you're applying torque on the machine right you're applying torque like this because of your body weight you're cranking it forwards like that 
and the EUC it applies a torque so then you get a reaction torque that's going to be equal to that torque that you applied on it so that's what you got to understand the EUC applies as much torque as it needs to keep you from falling on your face but it doesn't apply too much because if it applied too much it's going to bring you back and you're going to fall on your back right so now let's quickly derive this equation again and especially for you guys that didn't see that video where we did derive it it's going to be something new but even if you did just watch this again because i'll explain it better now so basically let's draw the road that's the road that's the wheel on the road and because of this torque because of this um torque that the wheel is applying it's going to put a force onto the road call that f r right and you've got a a wheel of radius r so that's just a wheel radius so you've got like you know 20 inch wheel let's say that's the diameter the radius is half of the diameter right and this is the torque remember the torque is that arrow here that torque equals the road force times the wheel radius r because the radius r is your lever arm in this situation of the road and the tire so rearranging that we get fr the road force equals the torque divided by the radius all right and remember that that is going to be equal to the torque that the rider applies on the wheel and what's that torque equal to that one that one's this arrow here that torque equals it's the lever arm times the downforce so it's just dmg right so all you do is plug that into there so then you get fr equals dmg on r see because dmg equals the torque so we'll call that equation one and now just look at what's going on here so we're applying a force to the road and what that means is you, you've got a an equal and opposite reaction pushing the system forward so that's your road force here too so that's your force forward that's this just like when you push on a wall if I push on a wall I go the other way don't I I push it sends me the other way so you're pushing on the road and it sends you in the way you want to go so that's how any vehicle works any wheeled vehicle sorry what are we pushing into we're pushing into the wind right that's the wind force that's stopping us from oh it's not stopping us it's like resisting our motion in that direction so when you're at top speed you're at terminal velocity and it means that your road force is going to be equal to your aerodynamic force your wind force right and your your wind force the equation for that is half of rho v squared c d a where rho is the air density c d is your coefficient of drag so we've got some known parameters here and at terminal velocity at terminal velocity this road force is going to be equal to your wind force so let's write that let's write it here f r equals f d so at top speed, we've got that equal to that. That equals that. Which means that dmg on r equals half of rho v squared c d a. And that means that, well now we can rearrange for v. So v will equal to the square root of 2dmg on rho rcda and that's our equation 
that we derived in the last episode. Let's call that equation A. Let's call it equation A. But basically, you plug in the numbers and you get your answer. And we got an answer of 308 kilometers an hour for max speed. I'll just put a max here. So V max equals that. And remember, that was assuming infinite grip, right? So that's what we got. We got this. See, that's the same equation there. We got an answer of 306 kilometers per hour. But looking at this again, see, we used, look, 75 kilogram rider. We used a D of 0.8 meters. Remember, D is that distance there to the center of mass of the rider. And we used an area of 0.5 square meters. And that's the figure I want to relook at. Because at theoretical top speed, your riding position is going to be almost vertical. Sorry, horizontal. But this area here is more applicable to a rider in the upright position. Like if you work it out, someone that's 2 meters tall and 25 centimeters wide, they're going to have an area of half a square meter. But when you're leaning forward that far into the wind and realize that at top theoretical speed, you're going to be horizontal, basically. You're going to be approaching horizontal. So if you look at the area of the top of an EUC, it's more like 0.2 square meters. Like if you measure that, that's going to be about 0.2 square meters. And that is going to be about the area you're going to take up when you're in this riding position here, basically horizontal. I didn't draw him horizontal, him or her, because, you know, I just wanted to give you an idea of the angles, you know, but just realize that at top speed, you're gonna be virtually horizontal, at top theoretical speed. Remember, it's theoretical. You can't really lean forward that much in real life, but it, theoretically, it's possible to approach it. So that's what you gotta understand. And if we, if we plug in the numbers now, so, If I change this now, if I change that to 0.2 square meters, let's see what answer we get. So remember, we had 306.4 kilometers per hour, right? But now I'm going to put a more realistic number in here and see what speed we get. 484 okay this is interesting so so now we're getting 484.5 kilometers per hour so that is this is more realistic as your theoretical top speed assuming you've got infinite power and infinite grip and that's what you've got to realize because you might look at it and say yeah right how can an EEC go this fast that's assuming infinite grip and infinite power and a perfectly smooth road, by the way. Of course, you can't have bumps on the road. That's how fast you could theoretically go. But in real life, you don't have infinite grip, do you? So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to work out how fast can you really go. Assume you've got a regular tire with a coefficient of friction of around 0.7. That's average for most vehicles. So let's work that out. And it's it's very easy actually. All you gotta do is now equate the aerodynamic drag to the force you can apply. Right? How much road force can you apply? Well, if you've got a coefficient of drag of 0.7, the answer is so let's call this FRM or FR max, so max road force equals your coefficient of um, drag, sorry, not drag, coefficient of friction, call that CF, times your downforce, which is mg. So we're going to use a coefficient of 0.7, so it's going to be 0.7 mg, right? 
So, if you equate that to your aerodynamic force, you have that equal to half of rho v squared c d a. And now all you've got to do is rearrange for v, and you get, so therefore, v equals the square root of one point four mg divided by rho C D A. And that's it. Now let's see how fast you can go. Right? Assuming you don't have unlimited grip. The answer is well, we've got to work it out. So the square root of 1.4 times 75 times 9.81 divided by 1.31 times 0 0.2 times 3.6 to get in kilometers per hour and the answer is 226 I don't know if you can see that might be hard to see, uh, but it's 226.6 kilometers per hour, and that is looking very much more realistic, isn't it? Right, so your V max, assuming you don't have unlimited grip now, is 226.6 kilometers per hour, and that's like a hundred and 40 miles an hour, roughly. And what's going to happen at that point, once you reach this top speed, you've run out of grip. You can no longer deliver road force without losing grip. What's going to happen is the tire is going to start spinning. You're going to fall into the kinetic region of grip. Kinetic grip is always much less than static. So you're going to... Um, your torque is going to drastically drop all of a sudden. From one moment to the next, it's just going to vanish, basically. You're going to lose a bunch of torque, so you're going to fall on your face. That's going to be the result of that. And, yeah, that's for now, let's leave it at that. I'll come back and revisit this again, and I'm going to add rolling resistance into the equation. And it's, it's not going to be much harder. We're going to basically have another equation. It's going to be similar to this one, and it's going to include the rolling resistance in the variables here. But yeah, there you go. That's, that's it for now. So just to sum it up, assuming you've got unlimited power and unlimited grip, that's your top speed. But assuming you don't have unlimited grip, you've got a regular road tire, of around 0.7, uh, coefficient of grip of 0.7, then that's your top speed, 226 kilometers per hour, which to me sounds very realistic. Actually, before we go away, let's work out how much power you're going to need to go this fast. How many kilowatts are you going to need to have in your machine here? And power equals force times velocity. And I'll work out how many amps you need to do that too. So, yeah, power equals force times velocity. Your force is going to be equal to your aerodynamic force. And actually, there's two ways to work this out, but I'm going to use the aerodynamic force. So, if you times that by velocity, all you've got basically is half of rho v cubed CDA. So let's work out how much that is. So it's a uh half -huh. times point two equals thirty two thousand four hundred and thirteen watts. 
32,413 watts, which is equal to 32.4 kilowatts. If you've got a 100 volt EUC, that means you need, just divide this by 100 basically, and you've got how many amps you need. So that's going to be 324.13 amps. So that's how many amps you're going to need to drive. But you've got to take into account losses because motors, electric motors aren't 100% efficient. So you're going to need a bit more than that. Probably just 10% more. So let's say 350 amps. So if you've got 350 amps, you'll be able to reach the top theoretical speed based on the tyre's grip. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty like cool to know. 32.4 kilowatts. You know, let's work that out in horsepower. 32.4 divided by... Forty-five point eight. So it's just about forty-six horsepower. Forty-six horsepower. You got forty-six horsepower, then you can reach top theoretical speed. Two hundred twenty-six kilometers an hour. Can you imagine going that fast on an EUC? It would be like flying. It'd be better than flying because if you speak to like anyone that's flying, that's flown a jet, the most exciting thing you can do is fly low to the ground. The lower you go, the more extreme it becomes. So if you're on an EUC touching the ground at these kind of speeds, it would just be mind boggling. The sensation, it'd be like nothing else. You'd become, oh, I don't even know. You might even go into like another universe somehow. It's like back to the future, you know, once you go past a certain speed, you go through the the wormholes of space and time. And who knows where you end up. But let's end it here. Hopefully that was easy to understand. And yeah, hopefully it wasn't too too tedious. And by the way, these are the batteries we use to get us around. Or oh, these are the these are 18650 cells. Like the OG Sherman, for example, has these cells in it. But the the Max has some bigger ones. Just the same kind of cells, just bigger, a bit longer and fatter. But the interesting thing to note is that each one of these cells can take us about a half a kilometer because think about it like on the OG Sherman you've got 240 of these and it's got a range of about 120 kilometers so each one takes you 500 meters it's interesting because if you made a rocket like imagine a, a little rocket using rocket technology do you think something this small could get you that far I don't know I don't think so it is a bit unfair though because the rocket has everything packed in there. It's got the propulsion and the fuel. Whereas this is just the fuel. You need the motor too. But because the motor's built into the hub, it kind of goes unnoticed. So that's the cool thing about electric technology, I reckon. You can really do some interesting stuff. Things that you can't really do with combustion technology. Like, if you were to think about it, you try to get a combustion engine into something this small where you wouldn't even have space for the engine let alone the fuel tank well, that should have been the other way around but yeah you don't have space for either this thing is basically just a wheel with a box around like this backpack sized box around it and you've, we've packed 200 kilometers of range into this thing. You try to do that with combustion technology, you can't do it. Where are you going to put the fuel? You need a gallon of gas probably to go that far. Yeah, about a gallon, I would say. Actually, you know what? 
we're going to work that out in a future episode. We're going to work out using math and physics. How much gas do you need to match the range of this thing? This is the Sherman Max, by the way. And it's interesting because with cars, it's the opposite. If you look at the range, EVs have, they struggle, whereas gasoline cars can go really far. But with this thing, I don't see how a gasoline engine is going to cut it. You're not going to be able to go that far. If, if that's all the space you've got, you don't, you're not going to have space for an engine. You're not going to have space for a, your exhaust pipes and, and the fuel tank. You need a gallon. Kind of crazy. But yeah, let's leave it there.